Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, we will be using the put request to update the Trello cards that we created in the previous video. So let's head over to the Trello REST API docs and see how we can update a Trello card. Okay, so we looked at creating a card, which was this one, so using the put request. And then we have this get a card, which we used to actually fetch the card that we created. And now what we can look at is how we can update that particular card. Now, when you're updating, obviously the things that we provided in are creating a card. Some of the required fields will probably remain the same. So we have our ID here, which is going to be the ID that we actually are trying to update. So when we created a new card, we got a new ID generated. And this time we're going to use that ID to actually update that. Then we have to same pass in our key and token, which remains the same. And after that, it's kind of up to us what we want to update. Now, if you notice, there are a couple of things here. So we can update the name of the card. We can update the description, whether the card is closed or not, and some other details related to that particular card. Now, this is obviously if you're doing, let's say, a functional testing, you would want to make sure all of these are working. You'd probably work around with different kind of scenarios where you're updating description, where you're updating, uh, let's say, name, right? So depending on whichever your use case is, in our scenario, what we're going to do is first update the name to see if that gets updated. And then we're going to try to update both name and description. So let's head over to our postman and see how we can do that. So I'm just going to copy this, which is put one card's ID and then head over to postman. Now here we already have post created, get created. I'm going to create another one. I'll do add request, name this put one card ID, and then I'll say update a card. Save this. So this is created. I will copy my post request, paste this here, and then change this to put, and I will save this. All right, this is good. We have our API key token already saved, so which is also good. Now, the only thing that I'm going to change here is instead of doing just slash cards, I'm going to add ID here. Then I'm going to do the ID, which we actually want to update. So I'm just going to copy the ID that we did created in our previous video, which is this one, and then just put it here. All right. So now if I hit a send, this would still work. Like if you notice, we got a 200 OK status back. So this is working. And the reason it's working is because we are trying to update it and we are kind of updating it with the same data that we created it with. So when we're not actually sending anything in the body, it's basically not updating anything. So it's giving us the same response back, which is actually you would do, get the same thing when you would try to get that particular card. Now to actually update something, we can come in here and then change this to raw JSON. And if you notice in our post, we were passing in this data. I'm going to come in here, copy paste that, so which is the same data. So I have my name, I have my ID board and ID list. So these are required, obviously, that we need to pass in. And for the name, I will actually change this to, let's say, instead of test three, I will change this to test three updated. Now, if I hit send, let's see if this got updated. We got a 200 OK status pack. If I scroll down, there you go. Our name is actually updated to test three dash updated. Let's see if this actually worked in our Trello application. I'm going to go back here and look at that. This is also updated. So this is now test three updated. And obviously, as I can keep changing this to whichever one I want. But what we will do is this time, we'll try to add some description in here and see if that would work for us or not. So for that, what I will do is add in the description field here. I'll just copy this to description. And then just say this description is created via REST API. Right, I will add a comma and then I'll hit send. Okay, now let's see if that description got added here. And let's see where that is. So that didn't get added. And the reason is instead of sending description, I need to send in DESC, which is a short form of that. So I'm going to remove this and then just pass in DESC and see if it gets updated. All right, so if this time, if you notice, we have description, which is basically what we passed in over here. So it actually did get updated. So our name is still the same. And if you notice there, we can see this icon over here, which says that there is a description. If I open that, there you go. It says this description is created by REST API. So we actually updated the data, basically added some data in here using our REST API, which is really awesome. So we can actually kind of make changes to any of that. You can imagine that you can probably make changes to all of the fields here, add in a comment and kind of do whatever you want to do with it. Now, once again, as I mentioned in the previous video, like if you guys do not have, let's say this kind of documentation, you can also try to figure this out through the network API or through the network tools. If I just go to the network tab here and in the XHR, we can kind of try to do the same thing and try to figure it out which API actually we are working with. So if I update, let's say updated dash one, 
And if I save this, and if you notice here, we got this ID and you kind of have to figure it out, like which one it is, because you're getting so many requests here. So you just have to, once you're more familiar with how this application is working, which kind of requests you're getting, or you can kind of keep opening one by one, depending on how many requests you're getting back when you make a particular action. So here, if I open this, this is my put one cards ID. This is exactly what we were trying to do. And in my body, if you notice, they're passing in just the name instead of sending everything. They're just passing name along with the token. And then they also have this something called invitation token, which I'm assuming is probably optional. So let's say if in your application, you don't really have this kind of documentation. Maybe your developers haven't really created this documentation. You can use this network tools to actually figure out what's happening. And let's say if this is still too confusing for you, the best option would be to just work with the developer to find out, hey, if I make changes to this, which endpoint is it actually hitting? And then based on that, you can try to get the required parameters for that and the optional parameters and create your Postman API request for that. Now you can just keep on updating whichever one you want. Let's say you can even update this test two. And here, for example, right now, I don't know what the ID of test two is. So to actually figure out what the ID is, I can simply come in here, make some changes, and then just see, okay, which one did it updated? All right, it was this one. I can copy this, head over to my Postman, and then just change the ID here. And, oops, I copied the wrong thing. Let me just go back. Copy this and paste it back in Postman. All right, and here I can just change this to test two updated and hit send. So there you go. So even this is updated now, it says test two updated and it's actually working as we expected. So that's pretty cool. And one thing, if you notice, it didn't actually update the description and that's because I changed this again by mistake. I will save this and this time it will add the description here too. Awesome. So it's pretty straightforward. You can keep working around with the put request and kind of change whatever data that you want. As long as you know what the ID is, which board you're working with, or maybe for your application, which data you need to send out. It's really straightforward. You just put in the required data and then just update whatever you need to update. All right, so I hope that wasn't too confusing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. In the next video, we will be looking at how we can delete the cards using the delete request. So we have created this card. We will just figure out how we can delete it. So far, we have looked into how to create it, how we can read it, or basically fetch the data, how we can update it. And the next one would be obviously how to delete that. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, if you have not signed up to my mailing list, please make sure to do that so that you get notified of all the latest blogs and videos that I put out weekly. I will add the link in the description below for that. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.